Dead Zones 2.0. There's your stick. There's your dead zone, that little circle right there, that white one, okay? Here's your outer, that's the edge. When I move my controller stick all the way to the edge, that's where your look acceleration kicks in. That's your outer dead zone at 0%. When you increase the outer dead zone on Halo 5 or max look input threshold, your look acceleration kicks in here which makes your aim way more sensitive, way faster earlier, okay? And the more you increase it, the closer it gets to your center dead zone. So increasing the max look in thresh threshold input on Halo Infinite or AKA outer dead zone on Halo 5 makes this kick in quicker. Your look acceler it affects look acceleration. Look acceleration does not kick in until you reach your outer dead zone. Okay, inner dead zone. When you increase this, the dead zone becomes bigger, and this is where people get confused. Meaning, at zero percent, the second I touch it, I start aiming. Okay, I don't have to reach this circle right here. The second you increase the inner dead zone, it gets bigger. Meaning, I can move the stick just slightly to try to start aiming, and the reticle will not aim until it hits that de dead zone. Okay, so in your dead zone, you're increasing um, aim. When you do both at the same time, all right, you're dead till about there when you're moving, and you're quick as fast as possible early. So you have a smaller window of aim. And on Halo 5, what that does, and probably on Infinite too, I haven't totally tested it on Infinite, what that does is it tightens up your aim and it kicks it in quicker so it's counterintuitive really um, unless you have a screwed up controller but if the server feels really fast and your aim isn't laser you can just put like one percent on Halo 5 and it'll make you a little bit tighter alright or if the server feels slow you can put one percent on the outer dead zone I find if I go above three it's immediately way too fast for me I use like a mid-rise, about the same height as an E2 controller, um, and I play on 1X, but my I had to fix my E2 controller because it was uh, it was freezing up. I would just do this, and it would be like, beep, stuck, beep, and then I would do that, stuck, and I, I noticed it in game at first, and it was corrupt data from... Uh, my old Xbox and my E1 controller that I transferred to my first E2 and to my second E2 and for like two years I've had screwed up aim on E2 controllers which I didn't know about and uh, so I hope that helps um, I unless you can't stay on target once you get on target in infinite I wouldn't I would keep these at zero personally but I mean proximity's having killer luck using both so and he's an aim guru so I mean just test any and all things uh, for whoever which one of you guys Slayer Pro or um, Alex was using rings uh, rings I believe, I've never used them, but from what I read about them, I believe they're going to restrict your access to getting to your outer dead zone. I would ditch them. I mean, the general feedback is they're no, they're really not that good. I would tweak your aim sense. Um, I'd go down to, said you were playing a really high sense on Halo 5, I would go down to 3.5 or 4.4 four, or 4.5. Four, 4-3, Frosty plays 4-2, Proximity plays 3-5, Bound plays 3-5. Um, uh, an upgraded controller could help a ton, um, in my opinion, compared to uh, standard controllers. A lot of guys like the standard controllers better, so it's just all about finding your personal spots, but there's your dead zones explained. Outer at zero, all the way to the edge pegging that that circumference of plastic inner is when you're not touching it when zero percent I'm not touching this the second I start moving it starts to aim when you increase the inner dead zone percentages I can start